Sixth generation Mercedes E-Class Coupe is sleeker and more stylish than ever, but this time around dials up the desirability, aiming to offer a slightly larger, more sophisticated and arguably more prestigious approach to executive coupe motoring than obvious competitors. It does so with a more efficient engine for the volume version, plus astonishing technology and comfort that makes you question the need for a larger, more expensive, full luxury segment coupe model. The E-Class Coupe, it's the kind of car that Mercedes does very well. A luxury coupe with a prestigious badge that rewards you for a lifetime's endeavor without necessarily needing a lottery win. Here is the sixth generation version. No other brand can replicate this recipe in quite the same way, and no other brand has a car quite like this one. Now, yes, the same kind of budget would buy you better versions of the BMW 4 Series Coupe or the Audi A5 Coupe, but those cars don't have the GT grandeur of this E-Class. And anyway, they're separately targeted by Mercedes C-Class Coupe model. This slightly larger E-Class Coupe has a model history going back half a century. Its original ancestor, the Paul Brack designed W114 Stroke 8 Coupe, was unveiled in 1968 and further model series followed for a while using CLK branding. The CLK variants were based on relatively compact Mercedes C-Class underpinnings, as was the direct predecessor to this design, the first modern era E-Class Coupe launched in 2009. This car, though, the C238 version, introduced in the spring of 2017, shares its proper executive size platform with the 10th generation E-Class Saloon, which makes all the difference. It's significantly bigger than the previous model, both inside and out, and it gets a raft of fresh technology that the old car couldn't have dreamed of providing. And probably the most significant addition is the all-new 2-litre four-cylinder diesel power plant that the vast majority of customers for this variant will choose, and that's what we're going to be trying here. There is plenty else, though, that's new to this model line. There's four-wheel drive, air suspension, all-new infotainment technology, uh, sophisticated safety systems, and cutting-edge assistance features that allow owners to take a step closer to fully autonomous driving. Plus, this time around, Mercedes has put greater effort into giving this variant a sportier feel than the saloon it's based on. It all sounds quite an appealing prospect, doesn't it? Well, let's put this car to the test. With the sixth generation uh, E-Class Coupe, Mercedes has made greater efforts to differentiate the driving experience from that of the saloon. So the track is wider, both at the front and the rear, than it was in the previous generation model. And there's a 15 millimeter lower ride height. Both are changes intended to make this car feel more planted through the corners uh, that might also see you noticing a slightly stiffer damping. In addition, the variable ratio steering has been sharpened a little in comparison to the setup used in the saloon, uh, and that's in an attempt to make it feel more direct. It's all part of the development of what must be a very delicate balance of dynamic virtues. Mercedes wants this car to be perceived as a grand tourer, a uh, kind of junior Bentley GT, but it also knows that many likely buyers will have been considering pricier versions of slightly smaller coupe models like the BMW 4 Series and the Audi A5. This E-Class Coupe can't be too much of a step away from those cars when it comes to the enjoyment on offer should you want to drive it hard. In many ways, it isn't. True, at speed through tight turns, there's still more body lean than you'd find with the premium rivals we just mentioned. And the steering, although it is now better than it is on the other E-Class models, uh, it's still not very talkative when it comes to communicating much about what the wheels beneath you are doing. Push through that though and you'll find surprisingly high levels of grip and traction and through fast flowing corners this car has as fine a chassis balance as you could wish for. Now we should talk about engines. Almost all buyers in our market will choose the one we're trying here, the completely new 2 litre 194 bhp 4 cylinder diesel power plant that features in the entry level E220D variant and that's there to replace the previous model's relatively unrefined old 2.1 litre unit. 
This replacement engine is also a bit grumbly at idle and it'll certainly make its presence felt if you try to replicate the quoted 7.4 second rest to 62 miles an hour sprint figure. It is impressively quiet when you're cruising though, which if you're in the land of the unrestricted autobahn can be at up to speeds of 150 miles an hour. For E220D buyers wanting an alternative to the standard rear-driven setup that we're trying here, 4MATIC four-wheel drive is an option with this engine uh, with a rear-orientated bias that sees 45% of drive apportioned to the front and 55% to the rear. Hardly anyone is likely to choose the petrol-powered four-cylinder alternative, uh, the 2.0-litre turbocharged 245bhp E300 model, which is one of the reasons why it's the only model in the range that's not available with four-wheel drive. Uh, for the record, this version manages 62 miles an hour from rest in 6.4 seconds on the way to 155 miles an hour. Should you feel the need for more power, uh, then two V6 engine variants are on offer, both engines mated to 4MATIC four-wheel drive, and both shortly to be replaced by straight-six power plants in the Mercedes lineup. It's certainly true that silky smooth six-cylinder delivery seems better suited to the GT demeanor of this car. The more popular 258bhp E350D model offers 620 newton meters of torque, giving it nearly 60% more pulling power than this four-cylinder E220D variant, and that's enough to see the V6 diesel derivative uh, reach 62 mph in just six seconds, a figure you can improve to 5.3 seconds in the 333bhp E400 V6 petrol version. Both of those models have top speeds artificially limited to 155 miles an hour, and both come as standard with a feature that's only optional on the four-cylinder models, air body control, air suspension. This system uses pneumatic bags in place of the traditional steel springs to cushion the car from the surface, and that's something that you're most aware of over sharp road undulations and things like uh, speed humps and drain covers. For the rest of the time, the whole setup simply creates uh, well, a supremely cosseting feel, and it can make motorway journeys a magic carpet ride. We'd say that the air body control package is well worth having on this car. Without it, on the four-cylinder models, uh, you get a simpler, primarily passive agility control suspension setup that struggles much more to shield you from tarmac undulations and which can't be controlled through the various settings that are provided by the standard Dynamic Select driving mode system. Dynamic Select is one of those setups that executive segment buyers are now well familiar with, uh, offering various modes which allow the driver to change the feel of the car. Uh, in this case, there are Eco, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and individual options. All the driving modes are accessible via this rocker switch down here on the center console. And as we said, on a car fitted with air body control, uh, the settings control the damping, but on all E-Class Coupe models, they also influence uh, throttle response, uh, steering feedback, and the reactions of the standard silky smooth 9G Tronic Plus 9-speed automatic gearbox that all E-Class Coupe models have to have. You're going to like this Mercedes very much if long highway journeys are a regular part of your life. And if that's so, you're going to like uh, the car even more if you're able to equip it with what is probably the cleverest piece of technology on this sixth generation coupe model, the Drive Pilot System. Now, as the name suggests, this allows the car to pretty much drive itself, working with the adaptive cruise control and the active steering systems to keep the E-Class rolling in its chosen lane at any speed up to 100 30 miles an hour, moving itself right or left as required to keep the car on course. All you have to do is make some sort of input every 30 seconds to prove that you're paying some kind of attention. Now, if you don't, the car will warn you in no uncertain terms, and if you don't respond then, it'll ultimately stop itself and activate the hazard warning lights to teach you a lesson. In other countries, Drive Pilot is more sophisticated, automatically steering the car into other lanes, having assessed the surrounding traffic, following a flick of the indicator showing uh, which direction you want to go in. Now, unfortunately, UK legislation means we can't have that feature here, but we do get something that's almost as good, a so-called Car2X communication system that allows uh, this Mercedes to often almost magically respond to future weather or traffic conditions, or to somehow know what's around the next corner. 
It's not magic, of course. Uh, the setup is instead driven by a mobile phone supported exchange of information system that will see your E-Class sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other Mercedes drivers. Staying on the subject of smart technology, there's even an optional app that allows you to park this Mercedes remotely with your smartphone. It's the kind of gadget that you simply won't be able to resist playing with. We certainly couldn't. For half a century, there's been a mid-range coupe in the Mercedes lineup, and this stylish sixth-generation E-Class coupe is likely to remain longer in the memory than most. Now, it's based on an E-Class saloon, which might sound like an obvious thing to say, but it isn't. After all, both this model's direct predecessor and the CLK coupe that preceded that were based on humbler C-Class underpinnings, as in fact, the rear section of this car still is. Uh, the front and the middle segments, though, use the more sophisticated MRA platform that was developed for the current 10th generation E-Class saloon, which is why this car is so much longer, wider and higher than before. The most elegant touch is one we particularly like, the pillarless side profile that references uh, the Mercedes W114-8 of 1968, the coupe that's recognised as the originator of this model line. The absence of this central bar together with the frameless window design means that with everything opened up like this, you get this wonderful sense of airy freedom that on the move is further enhanced if you've also selected the optional panoramic glass sunroof. It's a pity though that the rearmost part of this side window has to be divided by this partitioning bar, although there is an optional styling pack that can provide disguising rear privacy glass if you really don't like that. Uh, this time around, the classic coupe proportions deliver an even longer bonnet, while the sweeping roof line provides for a drag coefficient of just 0.25, which makes this one of the most aerodynamic production cars in the world. Uh, shorter overhangs, they cleverly disguise the 123 millimeters of extra length and this distinctive lower crease separates wheel arches that house rims that for our market can be either 19 or 20 inches in size. At the front, the swept back bonnet features these twin power domes and it's been styled so that its contours merge elegantly with the now more distinctive front end. Uh, this features a low position sports grille with the usual centrally mounted three pointed star positioned against a background of chrome plated pins. Uh, the lights, they're now single piece LED units and they can be optionally ordered in multi beam guys with 84 individually controlled LEDs and integrated daytime running lamps. AMG lights trim comes as standard and delivers to you this deeper, more purposeful looking front bumper characterised by corner outlets featuring these twin strakes on either side. It's at the back that the resemblance to the vastly more expensive S-Class Coupe is most evident with its chamfered surfaces, broad shoulders and curving two-piece LED light clusters. Now these put on a light show when you arrive at or leave the car, illuminating outwards and gradually lightening when you unlock, uh, the sequence being then reversed when you lock up and walk away. Uh, moving the number plate to the lower part of the bumper allows a particularly clean finish. This whole area restyled for the AMG line trim level to feature a sportier apron with twin aluminium exhausts and a diffuser style bottom edge. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see. And that pillarless construction requires quite a lot of extra body strengthening, the weight penalty for which uh, the development team tried to mitigate with widespread use of aluminium. Uh, the front wings, the bonnet and the boot lid are all fashioned from it. Despite that, though, this coupe model is still 55 kilos heavier than its saloon stablemate. Time to take your seat inside, at which point Mercedes now traditional belt butler hands you your seatbelt over your shoulder on an extending arm. A nice little touch that really sets the tone for this car. Take a look around and you'll find that, as expected, apart from a few extra trimming panels, the basic architecture of this cabin is shared with the E-Class saloon. The only really unique difference being these more distinctive air vents. There are no fewer than four of them here in the centre of the fascia, all with styling that is supposed to echo the look of a turbine engine. 
The other main cabin talking point is this double screen instrument panel, which is standard on the six cylinder models, but optional on four cylinder variants like this one. It combines a 12.3 inch virtual instrument display with a second center dash command online monitor of the same size. Both screens fit into a single frame. Now, some dismiss this whole setup as being a bit over the top. One writer likened it to walking into a medium sized living room to find a giant flat screen TV dominating the wall, but we really like the way it integrates so beautifully into the whole fascia design. And without this package, you'd be stuck with a pair of conventional instrument dials and an older tech 8.4 inch audio 20 center dash screen. You control this uh, double screen arrangement via these neat little touch pads on the three spoke flat bottomed AMG steering wheel. Now using these uh, you can customize the instrument display ahead of you via three settings. Uh, the classic and the sport layouts give you two virtual dials or you can choose a so-called progressive setup which focuses on one gauge uh, the bottom of which can depict a neat safety assistance graphic if required. And you can set up the right of the instrument screen to show a rev counter, navigation information, um, date information or an eco display that uh, helps you drive more efficiently. As for the center dash infotainment monitor, well, as usual, the sophisticated graphics of the command online setup make those of every other rival system look well, a little bit second rate. Particularly nice are the vehicle sections that give you engine data dials and allow you to tailor your preferred driving settings via the dynamic select driving mode system. Um, there is Linguatronic voice control and there's all the usual infotainment stuff too, of course, with 3D maps mapping and live traffic information. Plus, you can also connect in your smartphone via the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay systems. It's also possible to create an integrated WLAN, that's Wireless Local Area Network Hotspot. In addition, the package provides a media segment that gives you a web browser for things like Facebook and the useful MB Apps section. Now, this includes weather reports, access to internet radio, and a useful local search function. It allows you to find anything from a filling station to a fish restaurant, a passenger terminal to a parking space. The command system's functionality is primarily controlled by what at first glance looks as though it might be the auto gear stick. It isn't, as usual on a mainstream Mercedes. The gears are dealt with by a steering column stalk. Uh, instead, this rather futuristic looking protuberance manages all your infotainment needs with a rotary dial that swivels, slides and pushes below a higher surface touchpad that permits letters, numbers and special characters to be handwritten. Although in this right-hand drive model, there's the awkwardness of having to do that with your left hand, of course. Enough on infotainment, time to focus on class and quality. And there's plenty of that on show. Build quality is predictably faultless, and the AMG line trim level that's standard in our market extends the interior's leather finish to the upper part of the dash, along with classy contrast stitching. That's a package that really lifts this interior. And I have to mention the leather seats too, specifically created for this two-door design with shaping that's beautifully contoured around the driver for superb comfort over long trips. They're electrically operated and heated of course and they feature electro pneumatic four-way lumbar support to soothe away any back aches. All round vision from them is aided by the pillarless side windows, but as with most coupes, it's slightly restricted when reversing. As for cabin storage, well, there's pretty much everything you'd want. Uh, this beautifully damped centre console cover conceals twin cup holders, a stowage area and a 12 volt socket. Uh, further back, there's this large twin lidded box between the seats with an SD card slot and two USB points. Plus, there is an overhead compartment for your sunglasses and there are decently sized door pockets. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, will the extra size of this Mark 6 model E-Class Coupe be enough to make it a proper grand touring four-seater? That was the kind of thing its predecessor couldn't quite manage. Now, as with most coupes, the door here is very long, so when opening it wide enough to access the back seat, it's uh, rather easy to inadvertently bash it against some sort of solid object. Getting into the back is certainly aided by this sixth generation model's extra 32 millimeters of body height, and by the way that the front seat automatically slides forward out of your way when you pull up the catch on the seat shoulder. Although the mechanism is rather slow. 
Now, once you are in the back, there are certainly signs of improvement over what went before. Uh, the 113 millimeter increase in wheelbase does indeed translate into extra stretching space. There's 74 millimeters more knee room. Plus, thanks to 74 millimeters of extra body width, there's 34 mils more space for your shoulders. Uh, the taller stance delivers an extra 15 mils of headroom too, even on a model like this with the optional uh, panoramic glass roof. Is it all enough though to leave two tallish adults really comfortable on an exceptionally long journey? Well, probably not, but it is predictably a big improvement over what you get in a C-Class Coupe or in a rival BMW 4 Series or Audi A5 model. There are no door pockets, just recesses that could have been moulded for the proper storage of bottles, but haven't been. Uh, just above on each side lies a shallow recess that irritatingly isn't quite large enough to take an average smartphone. Uh, you can't argue with the classy standards of fit and finish though. Plus there are individual air vents to keep you cool and this double cup holders provided in the middle of the seats. So finally, let's check out boot space. Now you expect that the sixth generation models 123 millimeters of extra body length would have provided for a larger boot this time around. Now actually, when you lift the lid, we've got the optional power assistance here, you find that the reverse is true. There being actually 25 liters less than there was before, the total now being 425 liters. Now that makes this trunk area 15 liters smaller than a comparable BMW 4 Series and 45 liters smaller than an equivalent Audi A5. The access to it is fairly narrow too. Uh, there's no 12 volt socket back here, but on the plus side, get these useful netted compartments on either side of the cargo area, and there's this uh, fold down overhead hook for shopping bags. There's space beneath the floor too, though only because Mercedes declines to provide this car with any kind of space saver spare wheel as standard. Uh, it's under here too that you'll find this fold out cargo crate. Uh, it initially appears rather flimsy, but in practice it actually ends up being quite useful, saving the need for shopping bags if you're doing a quick supermarket visit. Now, should you want to carry longer items, the split folding rear seat has two uh, outer larger sections and a narrow middle portion that's uh, ideal for pushing through skis or golf clubs. E-Class Coupe pricing sits in the 40 to 50,000 pound bracket and all models come with a single sporty AMG line level of trim and as usual with an E-Class standardized 9G Tronic Plus 9-speed automatic transmission. At the entry point in the range, uh, there's a choice for much the same kind of money uh, between two four-cylinder variants, the 194 bhp E220D diesel we're trying here, or the 245 bhp E300 petrol model. If, like almost all customers, uh, you choose a diesel option, your dealer will offer you the further opportunity to find an extra £1,640 to get your car fitted out with 4MATIC four-wheel drive. At the other end of the range, a budget of just over £50,000 will get you this car with six-cylinder power, and the choice there is between the 258bhp E350D diesel and the 333bhp E400 petrol model. Both of those come complete with the 4MATIC system. Next, we'll position this car from a Mercedes range perspective. Now, this E-Class Coupe uses the same platform and all the same engineering as the E-Class Cabriolet model, which would require a premium of around £4,500. Now, assuming that this fixed top variant is what you want, uh, you'll find that it slots into the Mercedes two-door Coupe range a little above the C-Class Coupe, uh, comparable versions of which would save you around £3,000, but well below the next model up, the S-Class Coupe, which is probably from around a hundred thousand pounds. Now Mercedes thinks that a coupe should cost more than the ordinary saloon it's related to, so there is a slight premium to pay over the four-door E-Class variant, uh, mainstream versions of which actually can't be had with petrol power. Uh, so assuming you're comparing like-for-like -like AMG line spec, I think in terms of needing around a thousand pounds to go from four to two doors, if you're looking at one of the E220D models, or around two and a half thousand pounds if you're tempted by the E350D. 
so much for Mercedes pricing and positioning. Uh, the important question that we now have to look at is how all that leaves this car's value proposition in its marketplace against other brands. And that is not an easy thing to evaluate since there's nothing else quite like an E-Class Coupe. Uh, the two most obvious alternatives are Coupe versions of the BMW 4 Series and the Audi A5. But those two cars are targeted more directly by that more affordable Mercedes C-Class Coupe that we just mentioned. In theory, as we've said, this car has to be priced above that level. In practice, though, uh, once we've crunched the stats and equipped rival 4 Series and A5 models to the standard of an AMG line-trimmed E-Class Coupe, we found that there really wasn't very much in it. Uh, maybe a couple of thousand if you're looking at this four-cylinder diesel or one of the petrol variants. Only with the E350D 4MATIC V6 diesel does the price difference over direct rivals widen. Uh, if you were looking at an equivalently trimmed Audi A5 3.0-litre TDI Quattro S-Line model or a comparable BMW 430D X-Drive M Sport Auto, uh, the premium to own the V6 diesel version of this Mercedes would be in the region of around seven to £9,000. Are there other options in this market segment? Well, not really. Uh, the Lexus RC and Infiniti's Q60 are both coupes that like to see themselves aiming at this two-door E-Class model's customer base. But in reality, like those BMW and Audi models we just mentioned, these are really more C-Class coupe rivals in terms of both price and size. And neither can be had with diesel power. If having considered all of this, uh, you conclude, as we've been tempted to do, that there really is nothing quite like an E-Class Coupe in the current market, then you're going to need to know just how generous Mercedes has been with the standard trim. So let's take a look at that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there is just one level of spec, AMG line, and it comes complete with all the main things you might want. Uh, for a start, there's quite a dynamic look, courtesy of AMG body styling and 19-inch five twin-spoke AMG alloy wheels featuring perforated brake discs with Mercedes-Benz lettering. Uh, inside, the real leather upholstery you get with Rivals is a little disappointingly replaced by man-made Artico hide, but it is nicely combined with dynamic uh, microfiber inserts. Uh, it covers the upper section of the dashboard and it uses contrasting stitching for a classier feel, and that is further emphasised by black roof lining and open pore ashwood trim around the front of the cabin. Other AMG line features include stainless steel sports pedals, an AMG flat bottom steering wheel and a seat comfort package with electro pneumatic four way lumbar support. For front chairs that feature part electrical adjustment, they're also heated and they come complete with a classy belt buckler system that will automatically serve you with your belt buckle when you get in. Uh, elsewhere on the standard kit list, you'll find LED technology for the headlights and the rear lamp clusters. Uh, that comes along with keyless go ignition, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, front and rear parking sensors. Uh, there's an auto dimming rear view mirror. An alarm and 64 colour ambient lighting that bays the cabin in your choice of shades. Uh, you also get the split folding rear seat backs that, rather annoyingly, Mercedes makes you pay extra for on an E Class saloon. We also really like the standard Magic Vision control system that heats the wiper blades and delivers water through them. Uh, the amount and the temperature determined by a clever calendar algorithm that varies its output with the different seasons. As for infotainment, well, a Garmin Map Pilot satellite navigation system comes included, as of course does a DAB digital radio tuner, both viewed via the Audio 20 Multimedia System's 8.4 inch central dash monitor. Uh, as for driving stuff, well, there's agility control adaptive damping, speedtronic cruise control with a variable speed limiter, and the dynamic select driving mode system that tweaks the throttle response, uh, the steering feel, and the gear change timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Uh, you can pay extra to optionally upgrade your four-cylinder E-Class Coupe with the air body control air suspension system and the more sophisticated command online infotainment setup with its larger 12.3 inch central dash display. Go for the six-cylinder models though and both of those key extra come as standard uh, which does help to justify the high premium being charged for those bigger engines.
We think the command infotainment package is worth paying the extra for, if that's what you have to do. Uh, it gets you the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration systems that disappointingly are missing from the lesser Audio 20 setup. And it includes another feature we really like, what Mercedes calls Car2X communication. Now this is a mobile phone supported exchange of information system. And that'll see your E-Class sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub which then shares it with other Mercedes drivers. And that means that in a way that's almost magical, your E-Class will know in advance about things like uh, icy conditions and traffic jams. It's really clever. Uh, if you have the command set up, you'll also have the opportunity to pay a little extra for the widescreen 12.3-inch instrument binnacle display that we've been trying here. Uh, combined with the command monitor, this creates one huge floating dashboard screen that can be customised with three display styles, either classic, sport or progressive. Talking of cutting-edge information technology, like most premium brands, Mercedes has developed systems that allow you to monitor many aspects of your car from your smartphone. Uh, every E-Class Coupe comes as standard with the Mercedes Me Connect Services package, and this works via a free app. So this package will remind you when a service is due, and it can automatically detect and share with you details on your car's wear and tear items. In addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast breakdown recovery. Uh, uh, there's an alarm feature that will tell you when your parking meter is just about to expire. And there's an emergency call system that automatically alerts the rescue services in the event of an accident. Uh, now, most owners will want to pay the extra £150 that the brand asks to upgrade this setup to Mercedes Me Remote Online status. And that's a free inclusion if you get the more sophisticated command online entertainment setup I just mentioned. So with Remote Online, you're entitled to the really clever stuff. Uh, you'll be able to lock or unlock your car from wherever you are and you'll be able to locate your vehicle's position if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it. Uh, if you lend your E-Class Coupe out, a geofencing feature will alert you if it leaves a preset geographical boundary. And if the car's ever stolen, a vehicle tracker will show its location anywhere in the world. On to options, and as you expect from any prestige brand in this segment, there are a huge number of them to consider. Uh, the most popular are grouped into two packs called Premium and Premium Plus. Uh, with the Premium bundle fitted here, you get keyless entry and ignition along with a powered boot lid. Uh, you also enjoy front seat position memory and a panoramic glass sunroof with an electrically operated sliding sunblind. If you upgrade to the Premium Plus package, uh, you also get a 13-speaker 590-watt Burmester stereo system and a multi-beam LED intelligent light system with cornering lights and active high beam assist to make sure oncoming traffic isn't dazzled at night. As for individual extras, well, you might want to look at a head-up display that projects vital driving information onto the windscreen so the driver can stay focused on the road ahead. Uh, other optional features include more sophisticated thermotronic automatic climate control, a uh, soft closing aid for the doors and the boot, privacy glass, and a 360-degree camera that gives a bird's-eye view from above to help with parking. Uh, there's also an air balance package which gives you optimised air filtering and a choice of four cabin fragrances. Uh, if you have that command infotainment system, you can additionally add in a wireless phone charger too. Now we would also want to ask about the clever remote parking pilot system uh, and this works using a downloadable smartphone app. It allows a car to be moved in or out of garages and tight parking spaces remotely. Uh, you do have to have exactly the right model spec fitted for it to work though. Practical options, well, they include a boot luggage net, a uh, concertinering load seal protector and the usual range of tow bars and roof racks. On to aesthetics, uh, there's a choice of standard or Designo metallic paint finishes. Uh, here we've got Designo diamond white metallic and you can specify wheels of 19 or 20 inches in size. Uh, there's also an optional night package that adds rear privacy glass and finishes many of the exterior elements uh, including the wheels, the bumper trim, uh, the mirror housings, the front apron and the grille in high gloss black. Plus, you can get chromed door handle recess plates uh, and puddle lights that project the Mercedes logo onto the ground as you get out at night. 
Uh, moving inside, you'll want to get the look and feel of the cabin to your specific taste. Uh, here we've got aluminium and black ash wood trim, but other options include finishes in aluminium, metal weave or piano lacquer. Or you could go for wood trimming in elm, magnolia, uh, light brown scent or brown ash. Uh, you can complement those options with a center console that's finished in either high gloss black, ash or elm. And finally, full proper leather or even softer Nappa leather upholstery would be nice to have. And if you opt for either of those, uh, you can also add in a warmth comfort package and that'll give you heat for the armrests and for the rear seats. Enough on that, let's switch to safety, which down the years has always been a primary consideration for Mercedes with this car. So let's give you some highlights from the roster this time around. Uh, we'll start with active brake assist, and that's there to warn the driver of an impending collision and brake automatically if there's no response. Now, testing has indicated that this whole setup will eradicate 20% of nose-to-tail accidents and uh, decrease the severity in a further 25% of cases. And there's more. All variants get crosswind assist that helps to stabilize the car in sudden side gusts of wind and steer control steering assist that helps you to keep the wheel straight at cruising speeds. Uh, attention assist will monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness and the pre-safe program will tighten the seat belts, it'll close the windows and it'll even adjust the seats in a fraction of a second if the stability system deems an accident is inevitable. There's also an active bonnet to protect pedestrians and the usual twin front, side and curtain airbags. Plus, there's a knee bag for the driver. As you'd expect, tyre pressure monitoring and all the usual electronic aids for traction, braking and stability control are included too. Want to go further? Then you'll need to know that extra cost safety features are grouped into two options packs uh, called lane tracking and driving assistance. Now the lane tracking package comes with two key features, active blind spot assist, which will stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake when you're on the move, and active lane keeping assist, uh, which lets the driver know if the car's inadvertently wandering over road markings. Now, this will also gently steer the car back into lane if the driver doesn't intervene. Uh, if you want the rear Really clever stuff though, you'll have to stretch to that pricier driving assistance package, which includes both of those functions and lots more. So let's talk you through it. So let's start with the thing we really wanted to try on this E-Class, the drive pilot system. That's a feature that takes you closer to autonomous driving than anything you'll have tried before and allows the car to pretty much drive itself. Drive Pilot combines with adaptive cruise control and active steering to keep you in your chosen lane at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. All you have to do is make some sort of input every 30 seconds so that the system knows you're still concentrating. Other driving assistance package features include an evasive steering assist feature that scans the road ahead for pedestrians and which supports you in making sudden manoeuvres to avoid them. In addition, the active brake assist system I mentioned earlier is here built on with functionality that deals with tailbacks and traffic approaching from the side. Uh, there's also extra pre-safe functionality. Pre-safe Plus uh, will protect you when a rear end collision threatens, while pre-safe impulse side better protects the cabin for a heavy side impact. Uh, using inflatable bolsters inside the seats, it puts more space between those inside the car and whatever might be about to smash into it. It's all very reassuring. We'd expected a class-leading efficiency showing from this sixth-generation E-Class Coupe. After all, the theoretically nearly identical E-Class saloon it's based on provides exactly that uh, in its volume E220D guys, returning 72.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 102 grams per kilometer of CO2. Now that kind of showing would have been enough to severely embarrass the efficiency leader in the executive coupe class, Audi's A5 Coupe 2 litre TDI. As it is, this E-Class Coupe must, in its most popular E220D guys, slot in behind its premium German rivals in this segment. That's thanks to figures which see it deliver 61.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 119 grams per kilometer of CO2. Why the difference over the saloon? 
Well, it comes down to a couple of things. First, this coupe variant runs as standard on large 19-inch wheels. If you bolt those onto a four-door E220D, uh, the readings wouldn't look anything like as good. Uh, secondly, the E-Class coupe is heavier than its saloon stablemate, uh, carrying around 55 kilos of extra weight thanks to the additional strengthening that was necessary to make up this body shape's pillarless construction. Still, uh, we should try to get things into some sort of perspective. Uh, the figures that you do get make this E220D version of this Mercedes uh, significantly more frugal than a little 1.2 litre Ford KA Plus city car. And that really does put things into perspective, doesn't it? There are plenty of reasons why this has been possible, chiefly the installation in this volume variant of a completely fresh 2-litre diesel engine that has to be frugal enough to power much smaller Mercedes models. And on top of that, the E-Class Coupe is now the sleekest car in its segment with a slippery 0.25 CD drag factor. And it uses a much more efficient 9G Tronic Plus 9-speed automatic gearbox. All of this will contribute to a significant range from the 66-litre fuel tank. Uh, we should point out that if you add 4MATIC four-wheel drive to your E220D, uh, the returns do take quite a hit, falling to 53.3 mpg and 137 grams per kilometre. As for the V6 diesel in the E350D 4MATIC variant, well, that's due for replacement by a much more efficient straight-six power plant in the relatively near future. So it's perhaps not surprising that this variant's returns are a little below the class standard. Uh, you're looking at 42.8 mpg on the combined cycle and 174 grams per kilometre, which is a significant step backwards from the readings posted by the V6 diesel model in the previous generation E-Class Coupe. Now that new engine really can't can't come soon enough. Another V6 unit due for imminent replacement by a straight six is the three litre twin turbo petrol engine used in the E400 formatic model. This manages 33.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 189 grams per kilometre of CO2. There is also a lesser two-wheel drive petrol model, uh, the four-cylinder two-litre single turbo E300, which manages 40.4 mpg and 160 grams per kilometre. All E-Class Coupe models get an eco start-stop function to cut the engine when you don't need it, uh, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Plus, there's a gliding feature which disconnects the engine from the transmission to save fuel at cruising speeds. The diesels also use an add blue system to cleanse their fuel of impurities uh, using additive from a reservoir that will need to be topped up at regular services. In addition, of course, the driver will need to play his or her part. Uh, obviously, to get anywhere near the returns we've quoted, you'll need to set the Dynamic Select Driving Mode system into its eco setting. Now, this will marginally limit the accelerator pedal curve, and it also slightly restricts the output of the seat heating, uh, the heated rear window, and the air conditioning. You can also bring up two options in the instrument binnacle that'll help. Uh, there's a consumption screen, which shows your average fuel figure, and an eco display, which will grade your driving based on acceleration, deceleration, and constancy of speed, showing in real time the bonus frugality you've achieved through careful driving uh, since the start of your trip. There's also a fuel consumption section on the Facia's central media display screen that gives you graphical evidence of your success or otherwise in achieving maximum efficiency. What else? Well, it is a pity that Mercedes couldn't have price positioned this entry level two wheel drive E220D variant uh, so it could have slotted in just below rather than just above the £40,000 threshold, uh, above which it's necessary to pay a luxury car tax that will set you back an extra £310 for the first five years of ownership. Other things we need to tell you about include the fact that the comprehensive three-year unlimited mileage warranty is built upon by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have the car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. And it's worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by going for the optional service care package uh, that takes care of routine maintenance, spreading the cost of regular servicing, uh, guaranteeing the price of parts and labor for up to four services and covering the cost of all recommended service items such as brake fluid, uh, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters and screen wash. 
There's also an assist dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visit is due. It's also worth mentioning that the optional Mercedes Me Connect Services package includes remote self-diagnostic capability and enables your E-Class Coupe to monitor wear and tear items and alert your local dealer uh, to let you know if something needs steering to. You can also insure your car through Mercedes, although most company drivers will have this included in their lease cost. Uh, if you do pay the insurance on car yourself, uh, you need to know about ratings. Both E220D variants sit in Group 35E, uh, though that rises to Group 36E if you opt for one of the optional premium equipment packages. The E300 petrol variant sits in Group 37E or 38E with a premium pack fitted. And finally, the E400 4Matic is rated at Group 41E. As for the question of residual values, well, we reckon they'll sit just above those you get from the, an equivalent E-Class saloon. When we consulted independent with regard to that model, uh, we were given residual figures varying between 45 and 48.5% after three years and 60,000 miles. Now that is a showing comparable or better than the best that could be managed by direct rivals. The improvements made to this E-Class Coupe, uh, the more efficient engines, the smarter looks, the extra technology have certainly been welcome, but the essence of its appeal has changed very little. It was launched to fully restore the powerful, luxurious, grand touring sports coupe brand values that Mercedes had unwisely compromised with the more cheaply underpinned models that directly preceded the introduction of this car. Uh, they didn't feel particularly special in the way that a larger, more luxurious Mercedes Coupe always should. With this design though, that has been put right. And it's certainly a package good enough to leave you questioning the need to spend, well, double the amount on a larger S-Class Coupe model. True, there are rivals you could choose that would be more dynamically rewarding to drive, but as Mercedes well knows, uh, that kind of thing doesn't tend to be prioritised by many likely buyers. These people will probably attach much greater value to the way that this E-Class Coupe will rack up huge distances in exquisite comfort and with impressive efficiency. Now, in that regard, the latest generation 2-litre turbo diesel engine is a very significant motor for this model line, not only because it powers the best seller in the range, it makes this car impressively clean and frugal with surprising returns that will make a, well, a lot of sense to the business drivers who make up the bulk of buyers. As for the advertised steps towards autonomous driving, well, yes, the E-Class model line does bring us closer to that. With the optional drive pilot feature activated, you really do feel something of a passenger at the wheel. In this mode, this Mercedes not only pretty much drives itself, but thanks to the Car2X communication system, it often knows what's around the next corner too. And at journey's end, you can even amaze your colleagues by getting out and parking your E-Class Coupe remotely with your smartphone if you bought into the appropriate app. So how to sum up? Well in driving this car and in owning it you feel another more elegant level away from owners of the brand's less aspirational C-Class Coupe and a cut above the sporting two-door models that that car competes with, coupes like BMW's 4 Series and Audi's A5. There's a maturity and a class here that those sporty rivals lack I mean, they could never be considered as a wise and cost-efficient alternative to spending 30 to 40,000 pounds more on a Maserati Gran Turismo or a BMW 8 Series. This Mercedes could be. And that just about sums it up.